Hello, my name is Jade Kale, and this is my final semester CAPS presentation. So what's the problem I'm trying to solve? Well, we have overpopulation, pollution, species die-off, extreme weather, and increasing temperatures. And this all points to one thing, climate change. At my first semester of CAPS, I was in engineering with Mr. Vanderberg, and after my project was done with the group, I decided to go my own route and start looking at projects I could do in my next semester at bioscience research. So I was looking through the internet and YouTube videos, and I actually clicked on this video right here, which you can scan the QR code for, and I was really interested in green spaces at the time, so I thought this building from Hamburg, Germany called the Biointelligent Quotient House um, was a really cool thing because they actually grew spirulina in the panels, which is used to heat the house, cool the house, and also avoid street side noises. How it works is the panels house water that grows the spirulina, and air is added through a bubbler at the very bottom to prevent the spirulina from rotting. And uh, once enough algae is grown, basically, it gets transferred to the basement of the building where it is extracted from the water and used as biofuel for air conditioning and any electrical needs. Attendants of this apartment building say that they can produce so much energy that they can power the buildings surrounding it. Another thing that inspired me was renewable energy such as windmills and solar panels and I'm always looking for something to improve upon it so I was thinking maybe it'd be better to use something plant-based because it could be grown sustainably. The first mentor that helped me out was Mr. Vanderberg, my engineering teacher, who really encouraged me to start this project um, in my second semester at CAPS. And he brought me upstairs when I had this idea, and that's when I first met my teacher, Eric Kessler, who oversaw my project. Another mentor I had was Joseph Luliano, who is a professor at the University of Arizona. And so I reached out to him and we had a Zoom call and he was more about sustainable transportation within an urban setting. And I was interested in renewable energy. But despite our differences, he gave me some really good pointers to start off my project. With this encouragement, I started to do some more research to hone in on what my project was actually going to be about. So I discovered the Verde system in the solar leaf, which is basically like the panels that grow the algae, but it can be implemented on the tops of roofs, like solar panels. Next is the agrovoltaic system, which I did my annotated paper about. So it's basically like this picture below where there are solar panels on top of crops that need a lot of shade, such as rhubarb and lettuce. So I was thinking about making an algae panel to go over the crops instead of solar panels, because crops have a light saturation point that might not be needed with the solar panels. Some alternate things that spirulina is used for is animal feed, pharmaceuticals, vitamins, cosmetics, and even protein shakes like this naked juice I was drinking. I didn't limit my view only to algae, but I also looked into using diatoms, which are these single cellular organisms. But the downside of using diatoms is that they needed to be fed minerals and nutrients, whereas algae only needed light for photosynthesis. While deciding to use algae, I learned about the farming process because it's really tricky when the crop you're harvesting is almost microscopic. One other idea I had for experimentation was finding out ways to fix a eutrophic lake. 
So I know that in farms, there's a lot of eutrophic lakes that surround them because of all the fertilizers that they use on their lands that run off into bodies of water. So I was thinking about using spirulina as an organic fertilizer on crops so it wouldn't affect a lake once it had run off. So after completing my project, there are some roadblocks I'd like to acknowledge. First was ordering materials. I was about to check out with all my supplies, then I realized that the supplier for spirulina that I really wanted was out of stock until after the due date of this final, so I had to find another supplier with a smaller amount to settle with. Next was uh, finding out the variable to change. So since I switched suppliers, the algae that I had switched to needed to grow in a certain medium. So that means I couldn't grow my algae with the variable that changed, which was the nutrients. So I finally decided to switch the tanks um, as my variable instead of the nutrients. And so next step was finding the right tanks. Um, I was looking throughout Amazon and all these stores and I couldn't find the right tanks that I wanted. So one day I was driving by and I thought Goodwill might have a good tank because they usually have a lot of stuff in their glass section. So I drove there and I found all the tanks that I needed. Uh, next was algae dyeing. So what happened in the cylinder vase was that there wasn't much growth because of unknown reasons, but I can infer that it was probably the lux level that it was lacking because in the picture to the very right, it was kind of more towards the window seal, so it probably wasn't getting as much sunshine when the sun went down. Finally, my last problem was the algae wouldn't pebble in the centrifuge, which made it a little bit harder to extract from the grow medium. So as you can see in the middle uh, picture, most of the algae was floating towards the end, and that would mean I'd had to put it in the centrifuge a little bit longer. But since I only had a limited amount of space and time, I couldn't put it in there for more than 10 minutes without making it inefficient. So what I found out from my experiment was that 
the open tanks are the most effective for growing the most spirulina. And so throughout my experiment, I documented the water conditions that they grew in to make sure that they were all the same. So you can see in the chart below uh, the conclusions title that the alkalinity for the open tank was a bit lower than the others and it correlated to the open tanks being the most effective. So I looked into it and I found out that the alkalinity actually stunts plant growth if it is higher and so I can guess that it aided my spirulina growth for that tank. Here are some projects that I think you as a CAP student can accomplish. So first was to eutrophy the lake assessing or business. So for what I was thinking for this one was creating a way to extract pre-existing algae from a eutrophied lake and purifying it for biofuel use for business and whatnot. And my next idea was agrivoltaics. So for my research paper, it was trying to see if it was actually worth the money putting into the panels and the crops um, as conventional farming. So maybe if you try to grow um, the algae in the panels above the plants uh, to see if it was actually worth it for that method instead of the solar panel method. Next was growing diatoms versus algae for sustainability. So I always thought that algae growing would be much more sustainable for the planet because it uses photosynthesis to get its food. But maybe feeding the diatoms nutrients and the amount of lipids it produces would offset that sustainability of the algae. Another good experiment would be to extract spirulina. So that was one of my roadblocks. And I think the problem with most current algae farms is extracting it because it's the most costly. So maybe trying different ways, such as the centrifuge. I use the coffee filters. Um, I've heard of some ways, such as using chemicals to separate it or even ultrasound could help. Uh, separate the algae from the water, something like that. Uh, next is more for like an engineering student would be to construct a tiny house, like a scale model with the algae panels and make it so it's affordable and available for everyone. Thank you for watching my video and I hope you enjoyed.